In this video, I'll make a clamp that will make holding down your workpiece both super quick and safe anywhere on the drill press table. If you've used the drill press, you'll know it's a bad idea to just hold on to your workpiece as that can quickly get away from you and end up being a dangerous spinning weapon in no time at all. Putting it in a vise is a better option. There's more weight to it, which definitely helps, but most of the time that's not even enough and the vise still needs clamping down. That's where the problem is though, as it's a slow and clumsy operation, so more times than not, most of us just don't bother. Anyway, that's the reason for this quick hold down clamp, so let's get into it and I'll start with these offcuts of aluminium that I got from a local CNC workshop. These two pieces will make two halves of a ring, I'll square them up so I can drill holes to bolt them together now, and that will be easier to do than when it's shaped into a ring. I've roughly marked out the ring just to give you an idea of what I'm trying to achieve. I'll use two bolts and join the two halves, one from either side. On each piece I need to drill a through hole for an M6 bolt to pass through and the other hole at 5mm ready for tapping. Before I tap the opposite holes, I'll drill a recess in the through hole, so that will be so far down and that will be for the head of the bolt to seat him. As I was drilling that, I realised I went in from the wrong end. I needed to go in from this end for the bolt to go into, but I've just worked out that I can still use this piece. I can flip it over and I can uh, carry on going in through that way to the right depth. Um, this hole that I drilled here will get cut away anyway once this gets turned into a ring. It just means I need to re-drill that hole back on this space here. I really like this tap wrench, but it doesn't work with a tap follower as it has a ball detent on the top, so I have to use this cheap one instead. I just get the thread started, knowing that the tap is square to the workpiece. Then I go back to the ratchet wrench and finish it with that. Before I bolt it together, I need to mark the centers, ready for drilling a center hole, and I've done that from the locations of the bolt holes. To cut it into a ring, I'll fix it to this base plate and I'll do that by bolting through the center and I'll also put some CA glue on as well. So the first thing I need to do is drill a hole through the center, but before I do fix it to the base plate, I'll face both the top and bottom to make sure they're flat. There's one last thing to do before making it into a ring and that's a through hole for the main rod that joins the ring to the vise. Starting a hole on the outside of a ring isn't the easiest task and will be easier to do now. I'm using something pointed to line up to the layout lines then I'll mill a flat ready for drilling. While I'm drilling that, I'll take the opportunity to let you know that my marking knives that I designed and made a few years ago are going to be available soon. It's a pretty cool and unique knife and many of you have asked about them, so if you're interested, click the link at the top of the description to get on the waitlist. And as always, thanks for your support. By the way, the hole is half inch and that's for a half inch 4140 steel rod. Next I'll mount it to the face plate ready to machine it into a ring. I thought about using the lathe but there's one operation needs doing with the rotary table on the milling machine so I thought I'd do the whole thing there. 
It's only the second time that I've used my rotary table. It's a fun tool and it's good that it's getting some use as it wasn't a cheap purchase. As it's not the most stable setup, I'm making fairly light cuts. I'm in no rush and it's working well. Next I need to mill out a recess for a cam lever and this was the operation that I needed the rotary table for. I could have just cut it out and filed it but as I said I really should get some use out of the rotary table. I'm milling both ends of the recess first and then I'll cut the section out between them afterwards. This cut should be parallel with the center line, so I need to rotate the table and locate back into the hole that I just cut, then mill along the x-axis of the machine. The original coordinates are still logged in the DRO so I can find my starting position and finish milling out the recess. That's the outside done, so now I can move the table over and mill out the centre. I put a couple of clamps on just in case the CA glue gave way, even though I didn't expect that to happen, just playing it safe. I'll put it back on the rotary table and round over the edges with this 2mm radius cutter. Next I need to mill out a gap between the two halves on the one side for the ring to be able to compress. I'll take 2mm off each half. I did some deburring and cleaning up. There's still more to do to the ring, but next I'll make the cam lever. I won't machine this piece as it will be much easier and quicker to cut out and shape with the bandsaw and the grinder. I did already start to cut that out and then I realized that it would be much easier to drill a hole now for a barrel nut. Now I'll roughly shape it on the belt grinder just enough that I can try it out and then I'll finish it properly later on.
It's a bit long, but I'll deal with that later. Next, I need to make a simple barrel nut, and I'll do that out of steel. I started by finding the center, then from there, it's pretty straightforward. Even though I didn't show it, I did spot drill the rod before drilling through it. Next I need to cut away a section for the bolt to move freely. The bolt needs to pass through both sides of the ring, so I need to drill through the threaded hole that I used earlier to fix the two halves together. That should be ready to try out on the column, so let's give it a go. That works an absolute treat, I'll finish the cam lever later on. I'll just mention that if the column has a height adjustment rack, then a separate ring could be made to go inside the main ring. It will be a bit more work, but I reckon it would be doable. Next I'll work on clamping the rod. The plan is to clamp the ring and the rod at the same time with the one action of the cam lever. I'll do that with a shoe that pushes onto the rod, but first I'll mill out a section of the ring and I'll make the shoe to fit that. I'm milling down so far to expose the through hole for the rod. I'll use another piece of aluminium for the shoe and the first thing I'll do is put a concave radius on the one end to fit against the side of the rod. I've got it sandwiched between two pieces of scrap and drilling it with a half inch bit to match the rod. Now I need to fit it to the opening, starting with milling it down to the correct width. I'll round over the edges and I'll do that with a wood router bit. The piece is 10mm thick, so I need a 5mm radius cutter to get a full round over. I don't have one, but the 6mm one will get me close enough. I just need to refine it a touch more to get a good fit. That works very well and doesn't seem to need much pressure to hold the bar. Next I'll round over the end so the bar doesn't get caught on it and can push it out of the way. And to help with that as well, I also round it over the end of the bar.
Now that's working, I can cut the shoe down to the correct length. It's not easy to hold onto and gets hot very quickly, so I got it so far and then finished it by hand. I wrap sandpaper around the column so the radius on the shoe matches it. The thickness of the sandpaper made the radius a touch too big, so I found another piece of pipe to get a better fit. The better the fit against the column, the more effective it will be. Here it is finished, sticking out just proud of the inside of the ring. Fingers crossed this works, so let's try it out. I honestly thought that it was going to need some sort of tinkering, but it just worked perfectly. The last step is to fix it to this small drill press vise, and I'll do that with a couple of bolts. I need to file down the chamfers on these openings just a touch so the bolt heads sit a bit lower. You may already know that there is a similar device called a float lock vise. If you do a search you'll find one. It looks a great item but when I saw one my first thought was it would be better with a regular drill press vise. I haven't used one though so I could be wrong but that's why I'm making this one. As expected, there's a slight amount of deflection, but nothing that will affect anything. And as the vise is clamped down, I still have a free hand to steady it if needed. I quickly finished the cam lever, which was the last thing to do, ready to test it out properly. For a test, I'll randomly drill a few holes in this scrap piece of steel. A couple more things worth mentioning, with the ring uncompressed the height of the table adjusts no worries at all and if the table needs to be clear it only takes a second to remove and the ring can stay where it is as it doesn't get in the way and it looks fine. I reckon it's fantastic and anything that's quick and easy to use will get used and it achieves its ultimate goal of improving safety. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.